You are watching Co-op for Two, broadcasting live from Champaign, Illinois, Sunday afternoon, 3 p.m., March 4th, March 5th, 2023. Today we are playing turn 10 of The Case of the Blinded Birder, a play-by-mail game from MurdersByMail.com. This will be about an hour-long session, as they all are. If you're just joining us today and you haven't watched the previous nine turns, you should leave now. It won't make any sense, but they're only about an hour each. Easy to catch up and join us for next time. Let's check in with the chat. We've got everyone here. We've got our official reply. Let's... Uh, well, actually, before we get started, let's just catch up a little bit. This weekend, Friday and Saturday, we played two episodes from the five-episode box from A Killing Affair called The Independence Day Killer. We thought it was going to be a Hunt a Killer-like subscription system, but it's more like a big, long, five-part cold case mystery where we're reading interviews and stuff. So far, the production quality has been very high. Writing's been very good. Puzzles and ciphers, a little strange. But uh, if you're interested in joining us for that, you could catch up on the first two episodes from Friday and Saturday. They're long sessions, about six hours each. We'll be resuming that this coming weekend. Friday and Saturday, we'll play episodes three and four and then figure out when to play the finale. And if you want to help decide what games to play next, you can visit the Board Game Geek Guild for this channel. There's a link to it on the About page of the YouTube page. And we've got a thread in there called GameCube where we discuss what games to play next. The other two games we know we're going to be playing soon are two Sherlock Holmes consulting detective fan-made cases by different authors. I'm hoping we'll get those in in the next couple weeks. All right. Let us take a look at our latest reply. Where did we send everyone? We sent Imogen. We actually debated this quite a bit. The vicar went to visit the security guy who works for the university and the three women who we know are nefariously involved in this theft of pottery and blackmail, they're at the heart of everything. At least one woman is. Kathleen Carwood, the head of the research team. We sent the vicar last time, or two turns ago, to talk to the security guy, and he was nearly killed. He was hit on the back of his head outside the guy's house, which was here. Let me see if I can get this a little closer for you. Um, that's where the security guy lived in a little cottage, C-53. Our vicar was hit on the back of the head. Bone was bled out. And uh, someone had the idea, let's send someone nearby and see if someone nearby saw him or maybe sees a dead body. We don't know if the security guy is in on it and attacked him or whether... One of the women researchers who told us we could talk to him then put out a call for us to be attacked before we could get to him. We don't know, but we wanted to send someone there. But I thought we should send the vicar. Maybe he doesn't remember anything. Maybe his memory would come back to him. Everyone else felt that was too dangerous for him. So instead, we sent Imogen with the dog Wooster and I guess the theory is Wooster might be able to stiff out some clues, but I'm hoping she doesn't get killed. <laughs> um, in the chat, I've got a comment here from Antina. Just an observation. The young boy said to Cecily some ladies from the library were looking for the birder. Is that true yesterday? And I completely forgot it. So last week we sent... Cecily up to the second cave where she broke the case wide open. She discovered stuff we already knew, but she ran into a little boy who told us that she and our victim's 
spotted a woman planting stuff down at the dig, we completely recognized her as the head of the research team planting items for the dig. Okay. Now, Antina says we somehow missed that some women from the library. Let's see. Where is that? Is that where did... Okay. That's a good point. We missed it. It's right here. So we run into him. We start chatting. And he says, you one of those ladies from the library? What's been asking about Rupert? One of them ladies from the library. What's been asking about Rupert? That's huge. Someone else has been asking about him. Wow, we really completely missed it. That's why you got to reread these things. Okay, so library is someplace we want to go then at some point. Is that one of our, um, yeah, it's one of our contacts from Cecily, B32. So I'm going to put a little note here, B32. We've been writing our locations on the letters themselves. I'm just going to make note that this is Cecily's friend who works at the library. Okay, let's not forget to do that. Hopefully Imogen will find some clues there. I wasn't sure it was even going to let us go there, if it was going to say, why are you going there? But the fact that it let us go there is a good sign. We sent Cecily herself, if you'll remember, we sent her finally to the firearms expert. I'm not sure the firearms expert's going to tell us anything new. We've heard two people talk about the shell that was found coming from a small caliber pistol. But she may, the firearms expert may be able to tell us whether it was fired from an Air Force military-issued gun, an antique gun, might give us a clue to who to find. Obviously, we do want to find the shooter. And then we sent the Nick Vicar where we thought it would be safest for him at the Gentleman's Club where he could hear this talk on the Iron Age controversy, but more importantly, talk to the Professor Current Houndscliffe, the person who started this dig, and who the ladies uh, who've na now taken it over, the researchers, sort of, are trying to carry on his legacy, so he doesn't have a good motive to give up any information on them, but it will be interesting to see if, is he involved in this, etc. Um, okay, so let's open it up and take a look at what we've got here. We... We think we know he, I mean, we know this. he's blackmailing this woman. We still don't know who killed him, though. So we're hoping to get a little bit of a clue in that. The idea that there's some other people looking for him is a pretty big deal. That was a good observation by Antina. It's a good lesson why you got to reread these things over and over again. All right, let's see what Cecily has to say talking to the firearms expert. Dearest Jesse, I came prepared with a plate of my county famous scones and clotted cream. Mitchell Caldwell met me at his door and inhaled the sweet aroma of the treats, his impressive mustache twitching. Cecily Miller knows how to bake a scone, he said. Indeed, I replied. You heard we've been looking into the death of Rupert Albright? I need your expertise. Share it, and this entire plate is yours. Mitchell gave a mock bow and accepted the offering. He said, Rumor has it that you and your friends at the Library Mystery Club have been looking about for clues, so maybe we are the Library Club. We found one, I said, in Borley Wood just west of the crime scene. Well, don't keep me in suspense, he said. I pulled my handkerchief from my pocket, unwrapped and showed him the brass shell casing we'd found near the bench. I told him how we'd uncovered it. Twenty-two short, 
said Mitchell Caldwell. Small caliber pistol. Maybe a target rifle. Though not one you'd use for hunting. This is from the weapon that killed Albright. I'm not certain, I said, but it's possible, don't you think? He led me down a hall and into a small workshop. Had me roll the casing onto a high table, then clicked on a desk lamp to take a closer look. Brass is still bright, so I don't think it was lying in the undergrowth for long. You can still see the residue from the powder. He sniffed it without touching. And there's the mark from where the firing pin hit it. If we ever find a pistol, we'll be able to match it. You do understand I'll need to hand this over to Inspector Swift. Of course, I said, but first, what more can you tell me? Hmm, he inspected the item again, this time for a long, slow minute. Twenty-two shorts are quiet, low-powered, commonly used as starter pistols like at races. But those kinds are revolvers that don't eject the casing like this one was. Hmm, they're not exactly rare as guns go. You can buy them all over. They're popular because they're small. Like one would carry in a purse. Woman's gun is what the police call them. In fact... Anyway, they can be rightly highly accurate with someone who's trained to fire them. Practice makes all the difference. Do you think this really could be from the shot that killed Albright? It certainly could be. Good work, Cecily. I'll see that this gets to the police. So she picked this up and decided not to share it with the inspector. So he's saying, okay, I've, I'm taking it to the inspector now. Um, it's certainly... So he's, he's confirming it's probably the gun. It's only been out there for a little while. It still smells of powder burns. Now, he tells us it's a 22 short. He's been a little more specific about the caliber. And he says they're quiet commonly used as starter pistols. But starter pistols are revolvers that don't eject the casing. They're not exactly rare. You can buy them all over. They're popular because they're small, like one would carry in a purse, a woman's gun. Well, a woman's gun sounds good to us, but I'm, I'm trying to understand. Is he saying that He's saying it's like a, it's used in a starter pistol, but starter pistols don't eject. So obviously this was not fired from a starter pistol. But is he saying, well, the other small guns that women carry in their purses are different and do eject? Or is he saying that whole class of pistols that would fire this don't eject? And then he's saying you have to be an expert. You can't just use this gun. You can't just, you wouldn't just use this bullet, at least from that distance without training. So we, we would have, the, our killer has got to be trained and a good shot. Quiet. That doesn't mean silent though. I'm still not a hundred percent sure whether he's saying that the small pistol that a woman would carry in her purse would also be the kind that don't eject. Or if he was just making an offhand comment about a starter pistol. The chat says, I think he's saying this isn't a starter pistol, but a similar gun. Okay, that's good. That's how I read it. Jan says a very uh, good observation. Is there a shooting range somewhere? Do any of the girls have that kind? Do any... Of the dig girls, um, 
Is there a weapon shop? That's a great idea. We do it. We all knew that we we're gonna have to find out if any of these three women shoot. But it's a great idea to think about visiting a gun shop. That is a fantastic idea or a gun shooting range. Let's look at our directory. Any shooting range in the landmarks? No. Government. There might be a registry for guns, but probably not. Back in the 50s in England. Parks. No explicit gun range in parks. Professional services. We've got Lawyers, accounting, insurance, publishing, pubs. There's the armory barrel where you might find people involved in the military. That's probably not going to be it. Schools, any gun shooting school, no social clubs. There's the Women's Council. That might be some of our high-powered women might go there, but no gut. No gun club. Stores. How about a gun store? Watch and chain. Department store. Books. Coins. Radios. Furniture. Toys. To gunsmith and hunting supply. LL Trips. Gunsmith and hunting supply. There's a sporting goods also, but that looks like our candidate right there. I like it. Then, of course, there's also the RAF. All right, well, I would put that pretty high on our list of places we're interested in. Gun shop, I like it. Military base would presumably have a shooting range, too. Yes, if we had some connection to the military base. We could just look around, too, at some, any of the um, parks to see if any of them have some, like, diagram of a or illustration that would make us think there might be a shooting range there. But I think the gunsmith stop shop would be a very good candidate for us. Who knows? Maybe we'll find some bullets in the near the pond. I think we might find a dead body. There's a commune here. Stables. It might pay to explore this map. Just look around a little bit more. All right. That was a very clever idea to go to a gun shop. All right. Let's see if Imogen survived her trip to the pond. Looks like she did, and she's got a lot to say about it. Imogen Bickford Smithy with Wooster. Dear Jesse, By the time Wooster and I completed our walk around Carper Pond, I felt a slight I felt slight disappointment. No body had been floating in its in its still dark waters, and I wondered if our worries about a second murder in Bockerley might be unfounded. As I was preparing to leave, I saw a fly fisherman at the far bank and decided to approach. Do you know Mr. Went? I asked, pointing around the house in the near distance, toward the house in the near distance. He hesitated, then looked at Wooster, sniffing at the bank, and his eyes softened. Fox's dog does Went quite a bit. I sometimes say hello, still I'm... I'm worried for him. Why so? He blew out of breath. Mm, couple days ago, I saw Wentz's dog running about in the field. These, they're looking hungry. 
That was odd. Went loves the creature. There were never they were never apart. That afternoon I ran into a man claiming to be Went's brother. He was searching for the dog. He caught my eye. Well, he was searching for his brother, but was trying to catch the dog to make sure it was looked after until he had. Did you speak to Wentz's brother? I asked. I? He said he was worried. I asked if I'd seen his brother. I told him last time I saw him was the evening before, just at dusk. A woman stopped by his home. Rather attractive woman. A tall blonde. We know who that is, don't we? Our tall blonde. Okay. They spoke on his porch for a moment. Went got a shocked look on his face. Then went with her to her car, waving his dog on the porch. They drove off slowly past this spot where I watched. The car reached the road, reached the road over there, and then she turned left, slowly, like she was looking for something along the ditch. That's all I saw. As far as I can tell, she must have been the last one to see him. Hasn't been home since. Did Mr. Went seem to know this woman? Oh, definitely. Did their interaction look at all, you know, romantic? Uh, definitely not. I've thought it over. Their manner was mm, confrontational. I don't think he liked the idea of getting in her car. Now it seems very suspicious. His gaze fell to the ground. I didn't know went well, but I know he loved that dog of his. He'd... Never just leave the beast to its own devices. No, he'd be dead before that. Well, maybe he is, I said quietly. You should tell this to the police. Something awful may have happened here. Okay, so it seems like it was a good, inde good idea indeed to go visit this pond because we've caught our witness and we've caught our tall blonde again who's the leader of the archaeological dig, seems neck deep in this. All right, and we've also got his brother, a man claiming to be Wendt's brother, at least. We might look up Wendt in the directory, see if we can find his brother. It might just be another way to get this information. Or it could be someone pretending to be the brother looking for him, but uh, I don't know. We don't we we don't have any expectations of a second group of bad guys. So if someone else is looking for him, they're not up to no good. They're just looking for him. I I would think. Okay, and now she gives us a description. They. She, can, she went and confronted him on his porch. Then they went into her car and drove off slowly past this spot where I watched. Car reached the road, and then she turned left slowly like she was looking for something along the ditch. What's that about? Let's see if we can find... What is he talking about? Is he, is he talking about... This road here, and then turning left. And is she looking for a ditch to throw his body? Let's see if we can catch a description so we can be sure which what road she's talking about. Okay, woman stopped by his home, tall blonde, spoke on the porch. They drove us slowly past this spot where I watched. What spot? Car reached the road there, and she turned left. So it's either this road and turned left, 
slowly, in which case is she burying the is she burying a body here? Or are they talking about a different road? Really it looks like you could only go this road or this road. If you went this road and turned left, you would put yourself in here somewhere. Looks like someone lives there at the Haydock house. I don't see any other roads. I'm not sure how you get into this place by car, whether you would go around here or if you have another way in. Interesting, if we wanted to pursue this, I wouldn't be surprised if she is if they haven't killed off the security guard because he knows too much. She was looking for something along the ditch. Did he know her? And he says it was confrontational. Yeah, it sounds like he's dead. House in the distance. Okay. All right, well, whether we want to follow up on that, let's make a little note. Well, I guess we could say, we could say here. Okay, so we could say this place she's driving, this could be either C52 or possibly even C60 if we wanted to find that ditch. Let's see about went. Is there another went in the in the directory? No, just the one. Just the one we visited. So we don't really know how to find his brother, if there is a brother, but I don't think we really care. Unless it's a, you know, a parallel investigation to ours. Okay, the chat says, I think he must mean Grand Lane for road. So she turned left of that road, so it can't be C60. So then we think, you you agree with me then that it's turning left at Grand Lane. So that puts 52 to be the place she might have been looking to dump in the ditch. Turned left at the road, Grand Lane. Well, I mean, she could have just been looking in the ditch. We don't know anything. I mean, there's another hidden little pond up here. That would be a good hidden place to drop a body. We might add that to our list. Probably not. That's if we wanted to find this body. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure it benefits us to find the body, except if we find him with the same bullet in his head. Then that's actually a pretty big deal, isn't it? Chat says, if she turned left, it can't be C60. My reason, <clears throat> my reasoning for C60 was that if they got on this road and made a left, right? This is a left if you're driving this way. This would be your left turn. So if this is the road they left from, then she would be coming this way. But I agree with you that it's more likely they're talking about the main road. Debbie says, we should definitely try to find the body. All right, well, let's keep that in mind. If it's a dead body, it's going to keep. All right, last up is the vicar. Who went to the gentleman's club to hear about the debate and to hear about our Houndscliff who started this dig. Let's see what he has to say. I like that he types his. Okay, so... He I love that he always titles his letters. He likes to tell us a story. So his story is about women and pistols. That sounds like we might be interested. 
The Rakers Men's Club is an exclusive place indeed, nestled behind the finest gold club this side of London. It plays host to the most well-connected and wealthy gentlemen in the Bockerley region. I shan't deny that I was intimidated by such an edifice. A simple person such as myself, a simple parson such as myself, is unlikely to have rubbed elbows with such people outside the church itself. In want of some advice, I called up Imogen. I explained for some time, expressing my concerns in order of importance from least important to most. The line was quite dead. Are you there, Imogen? I think I heard a snort. Vicar, listen to me. You'll be absolutely fine. Just act as you always do. But how is that exactly? You know, do that thing where you pretend not to not have a clue what's going on so that people trust you and share more than they would otherwise. Having not a clue what she was talking about, I thanked her, hefted my umbrella, and set out for the club. When I arrived, I was greeted by a Mr. Dunstable Raker, the proprietor himself. This was off to a good start. I told him about our inquiry and our curiosity around those professors and their scientific argument. Science, ha! Those old fools would argue, could argue about how much salt you put on a pretzel, which they did, in fact, as they waited at the bar for the event to begin. To be honest, Vicar, the whole thing was turning out to be a yawner until the door burst open and three women charged in. Women! Demanding to be allowed to stay and express support for Dr. Hounscliff. It seems they used to work for him or something. I explained to them that this was a men's club, and I expressed with great patience that they were welcome to visit in the coming days, at which time I'd provide a transcript of the arguments brought up by Hounscliff, Durante, and the entire audience. Well, how did that go over, I asked. Terribly. The lead one, Carrie or Kathy or something, said, and what if we wished to contribute arguments of our own? Well, at that point I had had enough. I made to forcibly remove them. And the stout one, Janet or Jenny or something, said, Don't you dare assault us. I have a pistol, sir, and I'm not afraid to use it. Goodness, I said. Did you see the pistol? No, she may have been bluffing, but I wasn't going to risk it. I was preparing to call the police when Professor Houndscliffe told me that he didn't want a scene. He quietly explained that he'd rather withdraw his presentation for the evening as a protest to us not letting the women in. Fine, I said. The event is off. And after that, they left together. And so ends the vicar's report. All right, well, um, we seem to be making some good progress <laughs> lately, and that was a very enjoyable scene there. So, our three women are acting as a group, it looks like. They're very tight, the three of them, just as they originally were. We, we know two of them. We know the leader, who's now being reinforced here as Kathleen, the lead one, Carrie or Kathy. And then the stout one is Janet, who we know is the shovel wielder. And Janet helpfully says, I've got a pistol and I know how to use it. So we think we might have our shooter here. But he didn't see it. Was she bluffing or does she really have a pistol and is she really trained to use it? Now, we've met Janet at the dig. We haven't identified our third woman, but we do know that she's active with them then. 
Any description of the of the third woman? No, three women. So we'd like to find this third woman. She's described to us at the uh, visitor's center of the dig, but we don't know who she is yet. We could go, they've all left together. We could visit this guy at his home. The Nicola, or uh, Song of the Loot says something that we should all be wondering. Is it Janet that attacked the vicar? Roberto says, I would say the vicar was attacked with the shovel. <laughs> That's a very interesting idea. She could very well be carrying a shovel around in her car. That's not a bad idea at all. I mean, we have to remember, Janet Russo is not like... We haven't seen her with a shovel lately. She was seen with a shovel in the photo, so it might be jumping to a conclusion to assume that she's carrying around shovels. On the other hand, if she's an archaeologist commonly going to digs, it's not crazy that she would have a shovel in her car and be comfortable with a shovel as her sort of working instruments. So yes, it's not a bad idea. I think the gun shop is uh, our best bet to see if we can't find confirmation that Janet really does have a gun and what kind it is. So sending, sending Cecily to the gun shop seems like a good idea to me. And we could have Imogen stay out by the pond and try to look for that dead body. And then other places we might want to go is we could go to Houndscliffe's house. We do have his house address. That might get us a lead on the third woman. If we talk to him and ask about the three women who worked for him, we might get a lead that way. I wonder if we could also get a lead on the third woman by going to, let's see. Um... The three women were a tall blonde, a sprightly brunette, and a dark-haired haired shovel wielder with a perpetual scowl. That's Janet. So the one we don't know is the sprightly brunette. We could vin visit Janet Rosso at her home. Houndscliff is probably the best way to get a lead on who that third woman is. But... The other options for us might be the Women's Council. It's possible that the, that the three scientist women are on it, but probably not. But what about, are there any other offices at Denham Hill we haven't been to? We've been, been to the main dig. We've been to the Squire Stone, so we've been to the Visitor Center. The only place we haven't been at the dig is the Sword Stone which is some landmark that is here. See, it's over here. And Kathleen, the lead, mentioned she saw him near there. I, it doesn't seem like that's relevant for us. All right, so I think we send Cecily to the where to the where did I say to send Cecily? No, I wasn't saying send Cecily to the gun shop. I don't care who we send to the gun shop, but we could send Imogen out to continue where she is around by the. We could send Imogen out to look for the body. We could have Cecily or the vicar join her. 
And then we should have someone go to the gun shop, but I don't really care who that is. And we could have someone go to Houndscliff's house if we wanted to find the third woman. Oh, and Kawamato, that's right, I forgot from last week. Kawamato is Kathleen's assistant. I definitely want to go visit him. Okay, let's see. So I don't know, I was thinking Cecily to the gun shop because I thought that was her contact, but that's the library, so I don't really care who we send to the gun shop. Nicholas says both Janet and Kawamato live in Fairbarrow Field, so going to Kawamato's to fetch more information about Janet might be an option. Cecily's better to send somewhere we want to badger someone. Berto says, Kawamato might have some grudge on Kathleen. Yes, I, I like the idea of finding Kawamato, especially since I was the one who spotted his name. All three are in for planning stuff in the ground. If Janet was shooting when they shared secrets, but maybe it just shows that they have guns. I do feel like it's likely they're all in and that Janet... Don't forget, Janet is the one who told the vicar about Went. So it wouldn't be crazy that she would just follow him in her car and, and hit him. We could leave the body search for later. All right, how about Cecily to... How about Cecily to Kawamato's house, the vicar to the gun shop, and Imogen looking for a body? What do you think about that? And then if it doesn't want us to look for a body, we could send him to Houndscliff. The, the uh, Imogen to Houndscliff. I like that idea. So Cecily to Kawamato, she can badger him into giving up some information. Imogen to continuing to look for the body since she's already up there by the pond. And we send Vicar to the gun shop where his naivete will hopefully get the gunsmith guy to cough up information about who owns guns. Yes. Okay, let's do it. Seems like there's agreement. Normally this is where I get talked out of something. But then we'll go to Houndscliff next. Next turn we'll go to Houndscliff. We won't forget to go to Houndscliff. Okay, so Cecily is going to Kawamato. If you remember, we didn't mention, we didn't talk to Kawamato this letter, but on our previous letter we found that Kathleen's assistant who showed us to Kathleen, who's the leader, is Kawamato. And if he know, he is a pers perfect person to have some dirt on her. And he might know about the third woman as well. Okay, so Cecily, and Cecily was the one who met him. So it's perfect that she would go visit him. Okay, F6 is Kawamato. Okay, Imogen. Now, there's our there's our mention of Kawamato that Cecily visited him. He's our assistant, grad school assistant. The letter in, so we've done that. Now, we're going to send Imogen out to retrace where she was just told this guy drove away. Or she, the woman drove away with wind. So she says they drove in the car, turned left, and then slowed down looking in the ditch. So we're going to send Wooster the dog to C-52. And he's going to be looking for a body. Okay. Let's put this down. If she finds that... That's going to be pretty huge. Okay, we're sending her there. And then Ko Kawamato and Cecily are going to F6. Which is where... Is 
is F6 off our map or is it, where's my glasses? We've got E's, N, C, C, B. I'm not sure F6. Can't remember ever going to an F. Is it off the map? Maybe it's off the map. It may not let us go to F6. We'll find out. That's a shame if, if not. Okay, and then we're going to send the vicar to the gun shop, which is LL Trip Hunt, Gunsmith and Hunting Supply B55. Okay, B55 is right over. Okay, let's see. F6 is bot off the bottom right. Yeah, okay, so that makes sense that he would live near the dig, but that way. All right. Here we go. Uh, the bullet was kept. Cecily has the bullet. No, the bullet was taken by the gunsmith, by the firearms expert to pass along to the, to the detective. Okay, Cecily's going to F6, which it might not like. We'll find out. Imogen is going to C52, which it also might not like. And the vicar is going to B... 55. Let's see. Any guesses as to whether all of these are going to be valid places? Let's find out. Wow, look at that. They all registered. So far, this game has been a real improvement over the first two we played. Uh, this is the gunsmith. The only thing to think to could talk about, though, however, is uh, it feels like we might be able to wrap up this case. We think we may know who we know who he was blackmailing, what he was blackmailing them about. We think we might have our shooter. The only thing we don't quite know is exactly what he was doing in that one location, and we certainly don't have proof of the shooter. But we may very well have our suspects in sight, the three of them. Although we don't know that they're all three working together, we do know that the leader is involved, and it looks like I suppose we shouldn't jump to conclusions. Just because she says she has a gun doesn't mean she's the shooter. Um, what about the dead birds from right at the start? That's a good point. We do have a little side case from the newspaper, the birds. Okay, so we, and we haven't vi visited the RAF. I guess we got a while to go. Okay, everyone's optimistic. You're right, there is that side case in the newspaper about the dead birds that we will want to solve before we're done. Taxidermy Shop would be a good place to go for that. All right, well, thanks for joining me. We'll play again on Sunday. I'm, I'm quite interested to see our replies. And then on Friday and Saturday, we'll be playing A Killing Affair. And if you want to help decide what games to play next, check out the Co-op for Two Guild on Board Game Geek. I'll see you next time.